Hey, hello my little cliff viewers, video 31, moving on now, we've not got that much to do, um, I think this is going to get wound up today, but uh, we'll see how it goes, um, this is my favourite place as a kid that I remember, um, everything kind of in one reason revolves around this, um, when I was saying about the Chinese in the last one and we used to go home and watch the um, Hammer House of Horror films for the horror. <laughs> Um, we used to be coming from this place and on the last picture that I showed you um, where of oh, the next to the last picture that I showed you we had the little palm tree works and the canal and the new um, tram bridge that goes along and on the right hand side you had the uh, RADS you remember it now don't you the RADS Radical, was it Radical and Liberal Club anyway we called it the RADS being kids and that and um, parents always known it as RADS fantastic place so many memories but I've, um, I've put a few posts on um, history and I've had a few people come back as well and it's been great. Absolutely great. I've got a bit of um, bit of story for this one. I'm obviously going to, after I've done this project, I suppose I want to do more and touch on different areas and also in, maybe involve people in as well uh, that I've got memories would, would be pretty good. And I'm hopefully, when I come back in August, I'm going to go and take some pictures of this place as well because um, it's just to me it was fantastic it's changed a little bit now because uh, most of the um, the houses outside have gone um, where you can see now in fact I tell you what I'll tell you what I'll load the first picture up now first of all um, I didn't have any pictures for the rads only the one that was showing so I want to say a big thank you to Chris Paul and Lisa um, you're fantastic you've all sent me pictures of the rads and inside the rads are outside and I'm indebted thank you very much and hope you don't mind and I'm going to use them I'm going to put them up now so this is the first picture showing of the rads which is coming up in your screens now as you can see this has kind of stood um, I suppose looking at it across the uh, across the road there was a little street that ran up uh, the, I suppose the, uh, adjacent to it and what you can see now with the rads was actually covered by houses I believe um, from what I can remember we used to walk up the street and there was all houses on your left and all of a sudden there was like a big um, like a double um, green door archway with a little door if you were just going to walk in you could open you know like you used to get for like these workshops where you could walk in and open the big doors it was a bit like a um, uh, like a gunnel as I've described but wider you could get a car through and then that would lead you to either um, there was the main doors on the right which we, we got a picture of one of them uh, which would take you kind of uh, up, up three or four steps and there'd be a guy sat um, just with a normal table and I think you show your club card um, all I can remember is kids he's just trying to push my mum and dad further to get in you know because we're, that weren't interesting to us showing club cards buying bingo tickets that was rubbish you just wanted to get inside the place and get your pop and crisps am I right? right so, um, but I remember they used to um, buy raffle tickets and bits and pieces as you walked in, show your club cards or pay your dues or whatever. Then you used to walk in, and also on the left side there was another entrance going in as well, uh, which was, I believe, um, the one that took you into the tap room or tap oil, as you used to call it. Oh, well, that took you up some steps and going that way. But I don't fully remember um, going in that way. We always went um, as you walked in. Through the little alleyway, turn right, and there was the cellars um, on the right hand side where all the teenagers used to go and snog and stuff. Too young, me. Way too young. Um, don't think Lisa was. <laughs> um, so she says, anyway. And um, used to walk straight, um, you know, to the right and into the concert room bit where the table was. So I only remember that bit, but anyway, I'm waffling again. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, read out what I've got so far, what I remember. And then um, I'll load a couple of more pictures up as well. So um, this is what I remembered about the Rads, or part of the memories about the Rads. Because um, it was a place we always used to go come Christmas, come Easter, uh, Whitson. Do you remember Whitson? What happened to Whitson? And any bank holiday, and most weekends to be honest, uh, we always used to go at Rads. Uh, you know, I could always, always tell when... Um, we're gonna to go, to go out for a drink. You see, we'd be, we'd be kind of playing, playing outside in the garden or off on the street or in the old houses and cars and whatnot. And the weird thing was, because because we had no, um, like, um, I suppose, bathroom or anything, because everybody got bathed in sink or washed in sink, um, we, we'd come back, we'd come up the ginnel into the yard and we'd uh, try opening the front door. And uh, we'd be there, like, if the front door was locked, 
Uh, we couldn't get it. We're banging on the door. And somebody would shout, "Go away! I'm getting ready!" And my dad and my mom would be getting ready in the sink, you know, curtains clothes washing. And if it was like that, or you could smell like the soap, or you could smell the the aftershave, or the old Brute 33 and Old Spice, <laughs> and I karate. I think my dad wore. Hmm. Bargain bin at your poundland, you'll find them. And um, we used to know that we were going to go out. And most of the time, it used to be the the rads. I think the non-pots was later, the Aqueduct Club, or the Viaduct Club as it was, or the um, Stanley for Forms, we used to go to Stanley for Forms a few times, so that's how we used to know, so it used to be really, really exciting, you know, because we knew we were going to go out, and then right at the last minute we were called in, you know, bar a, bar a core bollock soap and a, and, a, and a cloth or a sponge, right back at neck, get the dirt out, put a t-shirt on, clean trousers, which you weren't allowed to run around in case you ripped, and um, straight off to Rad's. Fantastic. Anyway, Christmas at the Rads. This is what I've got. Um, I recently was speaking in the last one about the toy shop on the corner, um, about all the different you know toys you could get. You could get like um, you know Galen and Space 1999, and of course Star Trek. And I always wanted a Mr. Spock. Um, I was fascinated. He was in his little cardboard bag and um, a little plastic you know bubble where he was stood. And he had the phaser, um, he had the communicator, and he had something else, but I can't remember what it was. But I always wanted a Mr. Spock, and one Christmas I got it. So here goes. One Christmas I got a Mr. Spock, complete with phaser and communicator, and I just couldn't put him down. Mr. Spock was there at the dinner table, everywhere. Dinner table, he went to bed, he sat on the cushion, if I was downstairs he'd sit on the table and whatnot. and if I went missing they'd be hell to pay for. Just went, went everywhere with me. Anyway, this, I got it, they got this Christmas day, I do believe. And on Christmas night we went to the Rads where the discos and mime band were playing. Do you remember them? Discos, or the four mimes I believe they were, uh, believe they were called. Um, I was speaking to my dad earlier today and um, we went on about this. And he said that he thinks there's only a, a, a couple um, actually still around um, these days that actually stored in it. I don't know whether that's true uh, or not, but they were they were fantastic, absolutely fantastic band. And the act used to used to consist of um, the, I think they were they, obviously there must have been four of them to be called four mimes and they discos. But they, they they'd have like a backing tape playing, and it'd be all these different songs, and you'd have like artists like um, Alvin Stardust. Um, Mud, um, and then you'd have like, like Gary Glitter, <laughs> dodgy, and then you'd have um, you'd have like um, they call it the streak, uh, where the guy used to run around the audience with just a policeman's helmet in front of him, and they'd have Bridget the Midget. Do you remember Bridget the Midget? And what it was, this, these four guys used to come on, and um, they'd just mime really and imitate all these different um, songs. All they would all piece together in a really perfect time in one to follow into the other. And they all used to dress up. They'd quickly run out, put a wig on, put a, a jacket on or a shirt on, come running out again, and bang on cue for the song. And when they did the uh, Call It The Streak, this guy, like I said, he'd come down off the stage, he'd run round, round oh, he had, he'd have to run down the steps, get all the way around the rads, all the way down to the bottom, all the way back up again, jump on the stage, and, you know, kind of get there for the mic, ready to mime again, you know, before the next bit started, and all the women used to slap him and try and grab him, trying to pinch this policeman's helmet, and it was just fantastic, and Bridget the Midget, they had, um, he used to sit down, and it was like a, it was, it, was, it was like a puppeteer's box, with a black cloth on the front, and he'd stick his head through, and then he'd have these like little feet and little arms, which would kick around as he sang around it, I mean, you must remember, I, I tell you, it was brilliant, and um, I think, I don't know how many years they were on there, but I think they were on there for most Christmases and most um, New Years. I mean, Dad says there was a few other bands like it as well, but that's the main one I remember, sort of thing. So, yeah, absolutely fantastic, loved it. Anyway, I'm going to carry, carry this on in part two, because I'm running out of time. Woo! -hoo! It's all going fast today. So, I'll see you in part two.